Right, Salam Aleikum girls. Right now, we know what we're going to do this lesson. We're going to do some drama. I'm just thinking to myself, how universal is this story? Like back then, everything was according like, to the family, you got to obey them. This is Madani High School, an all-Muslim secondary school in Leicester, and one of 11 Muslim faith schools now in the state system. I've come to see firsthand how faith and education mix. This school gets good results, and many of the girls here hope to become the next generation of lawyers, doctors and teachers. Faith schools are sometimes accused of closing children's minds down by teaching them this is the one true faith, and you get your truth from Holy Scripture rather than from opening your mind to the world. Well, there's slightly a misunderstanding from those who think that way. If you come to our school and if you look at our lessons, they're very much open minds, you know, thinking critically, understanding the world in a very critical fashion. Like all state schools, they teach national curriculum science here. But like many faith schools, they supplement this with religious lessons that they control and which are not subject to Ofsted inspection. In our school, when our teachers tell us um, stuff like, um, teach us stuff, it's like whether, it's up to us whether we believe it or not. Um, the teachers do not disrespect our decision. It's everybody has a right to their own decision at the end of the day. Yes. Suppose we take a fact like, are we and chimpanzees cousins? I mean, do you, do you believe that we're cousins of chimpanzees? Or, or know, monkeys? I, no, no. I wouldn't no. think so. What do your, perhaps we have a science teacher, mm -hmm. have yeah. we? What, 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 what do you teach about, about that? Well, yeah, we learn about in the curriculum because that's what we follow. Um, we teach them the theory of evolution. But then I do tell them we, in Islam, our opinion about it. And the girls also have their own opinion and ask questions. So, Miss, do we really come from chimpanzees? But um, they all have their own opinions for that and then come to their own decision, which every single one of them realise that actually we didn't because we believe differently. Every single one of them comes to the conclusion that we did not evolve. Yeah. Every, everybody in your science class, everybody in the school, comes to that conclusion. Well, in my class, yes, they did. Uh, uh, that, how, how many is that? I mean... Uh, class, well, I teach 60 year 10 students, so right. 60 of them. And all 60 of them end up rejecting evolution? Yes, because obviously they have their beliefs, which is Islam. Yeah, about evolution. Um, um, it, um, evolution is that um, human evolved from apes and stuff. But if there are still apes here, then how did human evolve from apes? This is the commonest question I ever get. What, what, what's the answer of your science teacher to that? But I wanted to point the question to you because I wanted to know your opinion. Well, I, I'm, going, I'm going to give you my, uh, the answer, but we've been told that your science teacher teaches the theory of evolution. I'm interested right. to know. That's exactly what we teach them, that um, humans evolved from apes. Yeah. And through natural selection, we became humans. And her question is, why are there still apes? Mm. Um. Well, I'll tell you why there are still apes. F firstly, we, we, are, we are not just evolved from apes, we are apes. Um, and when animals evolve from other animals, it's not that they, um, that they supersede them. It's not that we've evolved from chimpanzees. Chimpanzees and we have evolved from a, a shared ancestor who lived about six million years ago and who was neither a human nor a chimpanzee. There's a bigger point at stake here than evolution, of course. What's worrying is that a school that says it wants its pupils to be open-minded is, through its religious training, also guiding them to reject factual evidence at the very core of science and rational thought. Where does that lead? The school's job is to provide all the information. It is up to the individuals to see what they believe and what they don't believe. So I'd like to leave the choices to these young people. Yes, so you think that matters of scientific fact are a matter of personal choice based on traditional faith? Well, uh, no one, none of the reports that I've read says that evolution is a scientific fact. Just as there's a scientific theory which says evolution is there, there's uh, another uh, perspective from a faith perspective that says, no, God created all human beings. But I'm, I hope you'll see that from our young people, evolution is only one small thing in their lives, and or probably an insignificant thing in their lives. It's not a small thing in the life of a science teacher. She will teach children things which are contrary to the entire scientific community. 
Uh, now, that's not a small thing. That's actually quite a large thing. If science says one thing and the Quran says the other, who, who do you go with? Well, I'd like to believe that uh, because science, uh, scientific knowledge and Quran are essentially from the same creator, there won't be a conflict. The conflict will probably arise in our understanding of those facts. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. Um, my advice, if you pardon me for offering a, a, no, advice, at me, you are never going to win the fight against evolution. It is a fact. What you should do, what you should do, is to look at the Quran and reconcile it with evolution, which is what the Christians have done. In our re, we learned about science and the Quran. By the end of the day, we all came to one conclusion that the Quran is evidence of science. So what science has proved to be um, just recently is already proved in the Quran 1400 years ago when it was written. Uh, but, but that doesn't include evolution, apparently. No, it doesn't. Con um, um, that, so, what does it include? It includes stuff like the shape of the earth, um, about the, um, the mountains, how they secure the earth and how um, in the sea the two waters they don't mix, the salty water and the drinking water, so it's um, pure for us to drink. They don't mix, but they pass through each other. Salty water and fresh water don't mix in the sea? No, it's like... Um, they... It's a natural barrier. I was shocked they... that RE elbows out science like this. So you think the Quran is a good source of scientific information? Yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Right, and you're, you, you're the one who wants to be a doctor, is that, is yeah. that right? Yes. Yeah.